Hello everyone and welcome to this month's best and worst of beauty. I'm trying to think. I don't think you guys are actually seeing this in August. Not that it really matters, but like pretty close too. Not as late as usual. So I am proud of myself. It feels like it's been years. <laughs> since I filmed one of these videos, but it really hasn't. It's just been another month. I just think, you know, this year, the months, the days, the weeks, everything, it's all blurring together, so bear with me. But uh, here we are. I was able to gather 10 products that I had been using and some of which I will continue to use in the months to come. The ones that I will not are things that I deem the worst of beauty, at least for me. Those will be on the bottom of the pyramid, and then as we climb our way up the tiers, we are getting better and better with the products to my favorite product of the month, the best of the best, the best of beauty, if you will. That whole time I was talking, was the camera just like slowly <laughs> tilting? Anyways, uh, best and worst of beauty, countdown style video that I've been doing for the past how many years now? Eight? I really can't believe that, but that being said, let's just dive right in, blah blah blah. I've got my products here. I'm ready to tell you about them. So let's go ahead and sing the song together and then we can get on to it. It's the best and worst of beauty. Whether good or bad, here's the down and dirty. Yeah. First up, bottom of the pyramid. I hated this product. Like there was nothing about it that was good for me. And I think it's just, it's not specifically, I don't, I, I can't say for sure, but I think it more has to do with myself and this product just don't get along together. Maybe this product works great for other people, but backstory. So my favorite curl revitalizing spray that I use on day two hair from Aussie, I can't find it anywhere. I have been to four different targets and every single one of them is always sold out. If they discontinued that, I'm gonna be crushed because that was my favorite curl spray stuff. I used it almost every single day, used it when I got out of the shower, used it on second day hair, like everything, and it revitalized my curls, made them beautiful. So I, I was forced to look for a replacement product because like I said, I couldn't find the stuff anywhere. And so when I was perusing the target aisles, I was like, you know what? They do have a section for like natural curls, curly hair, that sort of a thing. And I was able to find this guy. This is the Cantu Shea Butter for Natural Hair Comeback Curl Next Day Curl Revitalizer. It's supposed to refresh curls, reduce frizz, add shine. And it says on here specifically that it's made for all curl types. So I was like, cool. Cause a lot of curl revitalizer sprays I feel like are made for people who have really thick and dense, beautiful hair. Um, I have very fine, thin, just hair. <laughs> and so a lot of the products are a lot heavier. They're a lot more like oil enriched and they're just not good for thin hair because it tends to weigh your hair down and make it look really greasy with even the tiniest bit of product. And so when I saw this, it sounded perfect and it looked perfect, you know, it didn't look like a gel in here. It looks like actual liquid and it is, but I tried this for like a week straight because I kept telling myself, no, maybe I just did something wrong. Oh, maybe I just, blah, blah, blah. I gave this so many chances and every time it failed me. This barely brought back the curl in my hair and worst of all, worst of all, it made my hair look like I hadn't showered in a week. It made my hair look and feel so greasy and just awful. So I am led to believe, like I said, that maybe this would work well if you didn't have thin and fine hair like I do. If you have thick, luscious hair, Maybe it'll work. Unfortunately for me, it did the opposite of work, I guess. I don't think that's actually an opposite, but it, it made my hair worse than it made it better. There was no neutral. It literally made my hair worse. So uh, yeah, that's at the bottom for sure. Now this next product here on the bottom of the pyramid, this was almost tied for being at the very bottom with that comeback curl spray. The only reason this got to be one step higher on the pyramid is because this had one redeeming quality. Did anyone guess it? This is the Too Faced Born This Way matte 24 hour undetectable super long wear foundation. I 
hated this stuff. And I tried to continue to work with it to try and make it work because everyone seems to love the original Born This Way foundation. And so I was like, cool, they finally came out with a matte version. Maybe it'll work for me this time. And so I tried and tried and tried with so many different primers. I tried mixing it with different foundations. And every time I wore this, if I wore it on its own, it looked disgusting. If I mixed it with a favorite foundation of mine, made that favorite foundation look disgusting. Because, you know, I thought, okay, maybe I can use it as a mix in put a small amount in a favorite foundation it'll make that foundation more matte it just made it more gross so this is awful I mean you can watch my weekly wear on this if you want to see the full rundown and everything but the only redeeming quality to this is that it's super high coverage like really nice but other than that it just ugh, I remembered nothing else good about this product I will never use this again it was awful now, next up, third thing on the bottom of the pyramid here. This is not an awful product. I just ended up not liking it as much as I initially did. And it is this guy right here. This is the Studio Makeup Endurance Cream Eyeshadow in the shade Gold. I'd gotten this in a boxy charm, and I really thought I liked it. And it's okay but it's just okay and I don't know that I'll ever continue using it in the future. It's a cream eyeshadow. It feels more like a jelly eyeshadow to me. Like when I finally do tap it in, it feels very wet, uh, but it does dry down. It, you know, it has that sink in feeling that jelly products tend to have, that dry down or evaporation, whatever. And it's pretty, but it's really, undetectable unless you're super up close I feel like like when I wear this on its own I feel like no one but me knows that it's on now granted I think it looks really pretty but granted like it's nothing it's like yeah I do wear my makeup for me but I also want my makeup to be visible to an extent you know I don't want someone to look at me and be like oh it's a lot of makeup. But I want someone to be looking at me and be like, oh, her makeup looks nice, you know? This is just so sheer and like I said, hard to see. I have to use a primer underneath it, which for me with cream eyeshadows, I would prefer not to. And just overall, I mean, it's okay. It's okay, but it's not great. Now, last thing, final thing, fourth thing on the bottom of the pyramid here, it's something that, it's not that it's a bad product, I just personally don't think it's worth using because I don't think you can see it. It's kind of like that cream eyeshadow, but it is actually this. It is the Milk Makeup Kush Lash Primer. This is another thing that I got in a boxy charm. Maybe it was the same month even, but uh, it's a lash primer, you know, a white lash primer. It must might make the slightest difference in my lashes, maybe. But I don't think it does. But at the same time, I still have been using this because it smells so good. <laughs> so I like being able to sniff it and then put it on, sniff it, dip it back in. Like, does anyone else have this? And do they love the smell as much as me? It smells like a delicious cinnamon crumble you would put on top of a baked good. It's delightful. Mm. It's not clumpy, but like it's a very thick white primer that you put on before your mascara. And like I said, I don't think it does nothing for my lashes, but I don't think it does enough to warrant actually using it. Like I said, I just really like smelling it. So, like, long story short, would I recommend it? No. But like I wouldn't not recommend it. And also, long story short, it smells really good. They should make that into a candle. If they could, uh, I'd buy it. All right, my friends, moving it to the second tier of the pyramid, this kills me to put it this low. I mean, it's halfway, but like, I had such high hopes and love for this palette until I used it. This is the Urban Decay Naked Ultraviolet Palette. Oh my gosh, I mean, beautiful, beautiful package. This was the first time I feel like in a long time that I was really excited for a color scheme in a Naked Palette, like, yeah. Unfortunately, this has some problems to it. The first thing being versatility. This is not a versatile palette. <laughs> If you ask me, I mean, you can basically get a few looks out of this, but they're all very similar because right here, these, these shades are so tonally 
visually similar once you get them on that like uh, <laughs> and then not to mention shades like cyberpunk and purple dust um they got the dust part right crumbly fallout glitter mess that i remember from old urban decay glitter eyeshadows see did you hear that honk in the distance someone heard me say that and they're like yeah honk honk i remember too it's awful <sighs> that being said the other shades are really nice to work with like this shade hacked here this might be one of my favorite eyeshadow shades ever for in the crease like it's a gorgeous color and these five shades right here all in tandem on the lids look so gorgeous but like it's one look and you want to be able to make many looks out of 12 shades but you just I mean maybe you can but I can't and so that's why it's disappointing for me I love these kind of colors on my lids I really do if you have green eyes like these purples with them shut up so pretty I mean really any color eye but like especially green purple a good one but uh yeah I was pretty I was pretty disappointed with this guy I mean I'll keep it and I'll probably still use it for certain things like that mint shade I love using lucid on my lower lash line who shut up and these purples are like if you want to use one of them they're really pretty and impactful but uh I wouldn't recommend it now Next thing on the pyramid here, I've got something that I was very curious about for multiple reasons, I suppose. A, because y'all know, well, if you've been watching me long and thoroughly enough, uh, you would know that I am a lip balm addict. I love lip balms and I wear a double lip balm mask every night when I go to bed. It makes my lips nice and soft for the day to come. And so when I saw that Too Faced had released something that sounded like it would be a lip mask. Uh, I was very intrigued. And then when I saw the reviews, oh my goodness, this has got fantastic reviews. Like people loved this stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna take the plunge. I'm gonna try it out. And truth be told, it's not bad. I really don't think I can describe the scent to you guys. It's like a weird sugary cherry chemical, but in a soft, subtle way. It's not my favorite. It's also not my least favorite. I use this as a lip treatment when I go to bed. My biggest thing, I think, is that A, it does nourish the lips. It does. Not as well as something like the Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask. That one is supreme, my favorite. But um, I also just feel like you don't get much in here. I don't know how I'm gonna get it out. I mean, I've only been using this for a month and it it's probably at least half gone and it's really hard to get a lot of the product out. I feel like I'm just gonna end up wasting a ton of this. Like there's just gonna be a ton of product left over in there. That being said, if you wanna try this, I wouldn't say don't, cause it does work. I just have things that I like better. Darn it. So there you go. Now, the next thing here on my pyramid is something that's been like a can't stop, won't stop kind of a thing. And it has been the lip combos that I've been wearing for a lot of this month. I am not wearing one of them today because it was a lot with my eye look and I just didn't look like it. But I am wearing one of the products today, blah, blah, blah. Either way, I have been loving using one of these pretty filter touch in soul soul velvet lipsticks i have three shades portland brick soul rose and havana red i love these shades they are gorgeous and impactful but i really really like them even though they're good on their own with this on top this is the ColourPop Lux lip oil that they had sent me to try out and uh this combo you guys woo, gives you some juicy impactful lips like really nice i love it i mean as i said these lipsticks on their own are really nice i mean i like the packaging it's that soft velvet nars kind of a feel they are very thin but still tangible is that does that word work there on the lips like you know that there's something still on your lips but it's so feather light weight and beautiful impact like very pigmented and just 
very, very nice for a matte lipstick. But with this oil on top, as I said, it's just delightful. I mean, I have stained the doe foot. I do have just this lip oil on right now, but I demonstrated, you know, so you could see what it looks like on top of the one of the lipsticks. But yeah, right now I do have on just this lip oil, but it's got some leftover tint from whatever was on the doe foot. So like this on its own is really not impactful. This is in the shade Gen Zen. It's very sheer, even though it looks like it would have kind of a pinky rose gold onto your lips. On its own, it's just, it's okay. Like, I don't dislike it. It's like a mix between a lip oil and a lip balm. I just wish it had a more impactful color. And like I said, that's where these come in and or that's where the residue on the doe foot come in. It makes it perfect with that little tint of color. It's just hydrating and nourishing and shiny and great. I just, I've been loving this lip combo this past month. I need to put those products away so that I can reach for other lip products because having those out on my desk here, uh, they're all I reach for. And I do really love them. <laughs> Now, moving up, second to the top tier of the pyramid, my third favorite product this month. It came with a sad thing that happened. Can we get L's and F's in the chat for the loss of Claire Sonic? <laughs> they shut down. They're not a company anymore. I don't know what happened. Like, what? I don't know. I thought they were a popular brand for their Clarisonic, their Mia's, but uh, apparently business wasn't doing so great and they closed. And I didn't find out until it was too late. They had done, I think it was a 50% off of everything sale to get rid of everything and all of the brush head replacements were gone by the time that I logged in and I had no spares. So I was like, oh shoot, I'm never gonna be able to use my Clarisonic again. What am I gonna use? Well, I had this. Do we remember? Did you see this BoxyCharm review? This is the PMD, I forget what it's actually called because it's not written on here, but it's their facial brush, their silicone facial brush that uh, when I first heard about it, I really did want to try it out because it sounded like a dream. You never have to replace the head. It's got the nice little silicone br bristles on there. So no worries about germs or bacteria or anything. But along with it sounding like a dream, it also sounds like ladies, ladies. Now, I have no idea what you need all of the different pulsations for, unless you're multitasking, <laughs> which I have not done. I, I'm being truthful. I have not used this for other purposes other than washing my face. But I'm just saying, if you want to, I don't think anyone would blame me. The thing I hate the most about this is that it's not rechargeable. You have to use a battery in this. But aside from that, as much as I thought I didn't like it at first, I've grown to really love this thing. It does a good job at cleaning my face. It really does. It has its drawbacks, as I said, the battery being one of them. And then also for me, it's just hard because it's, you know, a big round stiff thing. And so like getting it in your nose creases and whatnot is a little difficult. And also I really wish this had a timer on it like the Clarisonic does. But at the end of the day, are these things the end of the world? No. And I have really been enjoying this and I'm glad I haven't had to change the battery a million times. That was something I was really nervous about as well. But I mean, I've been using this for like a month straight now and I haven't had to replace the battery. So I actually do really like this and uh, I'm, I'm glad to have it. Second to the top on the pyramid. Oh, it pains me to have this here because many of you know, I don't, think it's ever really worth it to buy a mascara above drugstore price. But then buggers like this exist and I'm like, mm, maybe it is though. This past month I tried out this Stila Triple X Magnum mascara. I mean, again, the, the makeup companies, the adult theme, some a little more purposeful than others. Yeah, I just, I tried this out in a video where I was testing out a bunch of products that I personally actually really wanted to test out. This was one of them that, you know, I wanted to test, but I didn't really have any high or low hopes for it. But oh my gosh, you guys, this mascara is phenomenal. 
it's so good. It's got a honker of a wand to it, which I would think would be a little less cumbersome if you bought it in the actual full size. It sucks having it this close to the cap, but you know, making it work because, oh my gosh, this looks, as I said, phenomenal. I was about to say gorgeous just so I could use a different descriptor, but like gorgeous doesn't sum it up enough. I have to say phenomenal. It makes my lashes look perfect. Volumized, lengthened, separated, lush, phenomenal. So good. The only drawback on this is that I can't wear it on my lower lashes because I have very watery problematic eyes and it will flake and smudge the tiniest little bit. It's really not that bad. I could use this on my lower lashes if I had to, but like I don't because I'd rather just wear a different mascara on my bottom lashes, but on my top lashes, oh my God. I might buy this in the full size and that, I hate that. <laughs> because like I said, there's so many good drugstore mascaras that you shouldn't have to pay more than 10 bucks or whatever, 12 bucks, 13 bucks for them. But I think I'm gonna make an exception when this little baby runs out. This mascara is so, so good. Doesn't flake throughout the day on my top lashes, stays all lifted and curled and wonderful and it's just a beautiful mascara. And it comes off really easy with a remover, which, leads us into the top of the pyramid. Ah, top of the pyramid, here we are. The best of beauty for August of 2020. I can't believe we're almost, it, that just dawned on me, we're going into September, wowee. But I had kind of forgotten about this product, you guys, and I'm kind of really mad that I had because I was using a different makeup remover oil that was okay. But I think I was giving it a lot more credit than it deserved because this exists because I had gone through a deluxe sample of it, loved it, so I bought the full size, but then I had already, by the time this got to me, started using that oil, and so I was gonna finish that up before cracking into this. So now that I've finished the oil and I was able to crack into this, why would I ever use anything else? I don't think I ever will, because this is perfection? That might sum it up. Uh, first off, I was so happy when I opened it up and saw this. What magnetic scooper? Excuse me? Innovative storage so that you don't lose your little scoopy spoon? <sighs> Thanks. Um, have I even said what this is yet? Uh, this is the Drunk Elephant Slay, is that how you're supposed to pronounce it? Makeup Melting Butter Cleanser, Melt, Nourish, Kiwi Strawberry Seed Blend, Virgin Marula Oil. Huh. Huh. Making all of the, well, you can still be a virgin and make those noises. Anyways, it's a balm, it's a cleansing balm, and oh my God, it's so good. It just melts off your makeup. Makeup melting, it actually does that. It melts, I mean, I don't know if that's the actual science that's happening, but it does look like it is melting off your makeup. I use it specifically on my eyes. And I have never had anything, I don't think, take off eye makeup, more specifically mascara and waterproof mascara as well and completely as this does. Usually when I use a cleansing balm or cleansing oil, whatever, I have to go in and double cleanse. Like I use that and then on top of that afterwards, I use a micellar water to get the residual. I don't need no micellar water follow up when it comes to using this stuff. It, <laughs> apparently Fig wanted to give his two cents on it too. Oh, now are you camera shy? Do you like the makeup melt off? No? Fine, more for me. Anyways, you guys, I just do. I love this stuff, worth every penny. <sighs> Favorite, holy grail, for sure, love. So yeah, there you have it. I think a very long best and worst of beauty, depending on how the edit goes. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good product recommendations and non-mendations from me. Let me know in the comments down below if you have tried out any of this stuff and if you had the same or differing opinions from me, because like I said, different products work and don't work for a range of people. You know, what works for me might not work for you and vice versa and etc. So let me know all of the things. Also let me know if there are other things that I should know about 
in the beauty world down in those comments below what was your best and worst of beauty for the month of august you can also just let me know if you enjoyed the video found it helpful you know whatever the case may be by giving it a thumbs up down below i would really appreciate it and it really does help the channel out you can also go ahead if you are new here hey hi hello how are you you can go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more of me in the future tippity tap that notification bell down below and become a member of my casserole family here on my channel i'd love to have you here and as always i just hope you guys are all doing well and until next time just stay well until then bye what do you have to say for yourself oh No baggy pants and no sneakers.